Hmm. Well, so about two years ago, uh, around this week, I think, I did my first ever vlog, which was basically me going through a week of stuff, just, just what I'm doing, what I'm working on. And it's two years later, and it's kind of a pretty good time to do a follow-up to that. But we haven't really done one recently where it's over a lot of days. So that's what this is gonna be, because 2020 is in three days, as of filming this clip, and there's a lot happening. So between YouTube and Emerald Scales, there's only two of us right now doing everything, and it's possible we'll get someone else on the team in the next month or two, but uh, we're gonna see if we can handle it all by ourselves. It'll be interesting. But um, to give you an idea of what I'm doing now, this is where I film videos with some enclosures, and I just put those 10 boxes together, uh, and then this is small boxes, which I'm gonna dump out because I need it anyway. Dexter, hello, sir. Okay. And then these are teeny tiny six by six by six boxes for the little animals. And it's because we're shipping out 30 animals over the next couple weeks. So 30 definitely sounds like a lot of animals being shipped out, which it is, and that's great. It's uh, very patient customers because some of them have been waiting for months because of weather and holiday delays. So starting around January 6th, 7th, or 8th, we're gonna start sending out dozens of animals, which is the most we've ever done in this period of time. The funny part is, a lot of people have had to rehome in this time. If you were to ask me how many were gonna come in, based on the emails I've seen, I would have guessed maybe 50 new animals or so, which definitely sounds like a lot, but we do have an official number in of people who are confirmed sending animals who already have the supplies, who have already paid for the label, and who are just waiting to ship. 117 animals. That's more animals than we have total right now. <laughs> now thankfully a lot of animals downstairs, a lot of them are ready to be listed on the site, and the average animal sells but within a week or so. Some uh, two weeks, some three weeks, but most animals are sold within a week, which means that they'll be going out quickly and we'll be able to open up space. But since I leased this place, we have the downstairs and the porch for things like aquatic turtles. So we're gonna be good space-wise. Time-wise, I could always hire someone super quick within a week. And budget-wise, we're doing very good right now. So there's really, although it sounds stressful, there's no specific concerns. There's no just one thing. This camera's heavy. There's no just one thing that's... There's no one thing that's like super concerning or super stressful, but obviously with this many animals, there, there's there's gonna, it'll be interesting and I'm gonna film that along the way. In here is where the other shipping supplies is. This is a one of the closets. These are boxes that we got animals sent in. Uh, they're the ones that you've seen in the unboxing videos. And some of them you can see are torn like this. Uh, now I can just print labels that have this on them so I can cover that up. That one is just gross. I don't know. I think a reptile pooped on it. So stuff like that, I'll toss those out. Uh, but being able to reuse boxes that are in really good condition help us lower shipping costs even more. And being able to shave that off shipping can really help convince people to buy animals. Since they are not all reusable, that's why we have all these. And then people who are sending animals to us, uh, they get shipped directly from, from our supplier and then they send those animals. In case you were wondering what animals are behind me, this is Harriet, my eastern box turtle. Betty the American Toad, and then there's Stan, and a few others, but I'll show off the rest later. If you've stuck around since the first vlog, uh, you might remember putting these boxes together. Uh, you just take them and fold them like a box. Who knew? It's pretty crazy. Okay, it's a few, two days later, I think. So what I've done is, uh, for the boxes, each animal has all of its information. You've got the name of the buyer, the order number, uh, the animal's serial number, and then what it actually is. And then in each one is a letter to the person, uh, a, the cup that they need, and then the heat pack. So when the animal's ready to ship, you just pull one of these boxes off the shelf, get the animal in there, print the label, and take it. So there's about 21 boxes here. And then these will be put away. But that's not priority because there's a lot going on in here. So let's go check the other stuff out. So I'm back downstairs and we have two new animals that came in today. Uh, like I said, it's New Year's Eve, but people were still here. Uh, the first one is a little ball python. Uh, it's got a lot of stuff shed on its head. This used to be kind of scary, but now it's just like a walk in the park to deal with. So it, yeah, it's a normal thing that comes in. It's a little underweight. It's just a normal and uh, temperament looks fine. This is just the enclosure that the person gave it to us and we'll set him up in something else. But uh, he's not actually the priority right now. That's the animal that just got shipped in. Also in a temporary tub, which it just completely soiled. 
This is a female bearded dragon that's about a year or a year and a half old. Uh, and <laughs> you might be able to tell what the issue is. Its lips are looking a little wonky. This beard does not smell good. It definitely smells like infection. And her face is just completely kind of torn up and not good. It's, it's bad. She's also got stuck shed all over her head and tail. And uh, she's gonna be the main project right now. So unfortunately, we won't immediately get time off for New Year's Eve, but that's okay. Because it's gonna go to her right now, so. We're going to bathe her in betadine to get as much bacteria off initially as possible. She's already been to two vets with the previous person. They weren't helpful at all, so it's on us to do it. In this vlog, I'm just going to show you some quick highlights of what we were doing with this bearded dragon, but I will be doing a full video on her later. So we started out by giving her just a nice clean bath so that she could drink water. Uh, we then added povidone iodine so that we could start cleaning her up. We removed the exterior shedding and scab, opening the scabs let her actually heal in a proper environment which she was not in before, and we're going to show the process of how that went in that future video. So on the back here you can see there's just general shed from the legs and tail, um, not even thinking about her really messed up mouth. And this is pretty simple stuff that should have just been kept up with normally, but because there's so many layers it just keeps on peeling to the point that some scales are completely rotted and just falling off with them. So the best thing I think we could do is just keep on pulling them off and uh, let them heal beneath and have kind of a fresh start. And hope that future sheds are better and then you keep up with them more closely. Make sure to watch for that future video where we go over everything we chose to do and why we very rarely use exotic vets. I would go over it in this video, but I want to keep this mostly focused on shipping the animals, so don't take this video as vet advice or anything, but uh, keep a lookout for the future content where I go over how we do what we do. Until then, let's get back to shipping animals. So I will be shipping 10 animals today. Uh, I'll be pulling from the boxes that I set up. A few of them are right here. Um, yes, I, I stacked the delis, okay? It's fine. I'm holding the delis. They're not gonna fall. I'll start with the Beardy, Rainbow Boa, Euromastics, two sliders, and two Cresta Geckos. Right here are all the labels, pre-printed. Um, I just ordered all these and printed them out and then they'll go on the boxes. So let's start with an easy one. So although I'm not really interested in keeping a Euromastics right now, I've always really liked them and I've always really wanted one. And if I were to get one, it would probably look just like this Saharan red one that we're shipping. Um, he was sold to someone that's actually ordered from us before, so it's really cool to have recurring customers. It means that our service was good and they're happy with what they got. Uh, and we have a lot of people come back and order more animals. He's a cool dude and he's pretty chill right now. He's not always this calm. Sometimes he gets spooked when he's basking and uh, you pick him up. And so he's going to be shipped in a snake bag. Most lizards other than geckos are shipped in snake bags as well. I found that keeps them the most snug, which is pretty much the goal to keep them snug, safe, cushioned, everything like that. He's going with a large heat pack, this see-through snake bag, and then a uh, letter for the buyer. I just put him at the bottom of the bag. I'm just gonna do a really strong knot like that, and that should hold just fine. So for padding, I usually use paper. Uh, this is just tissue paper. We have different colors. We usually do green and white since it's the Emerald Scales colors. Um, but for this one, I'm just gonna do white because we have a lot of white today. And as you can see, this box is actually longer than the Euromastics, but I'm just gonna have him bend his tail because his tail is like half of his length. And he'll slide right on in. You can see there's still about an inch of clearance on each side. Uh, and I'm gonna put a little more tissue paper there. Uh, the heat pack, I'll go ahead and open. It takes a few minutes for it to heat up. And I'm gonna wrap the heat pack in paper. And then I just tape it on the other side. And then this just pushes on top. And then I'll put his letter right here. and then use a completely excessive amount of tape to make sure that nothing opens during shipping. I usually double wrap it. And then on the side, you've got what it is. And the label just goes right on top. If any corner comes up at all, I add a little piece of tape to make sure it does not peel off. Because although they could figure it out and find out where it goes, we don't want to risk any extra delays. So this box is ready to go. 
So now I'll go ahead and pack this uh, yellow bellied slider. This is one that you probably saw in a video if you watched the video about the slider not having lighting for a couple decades and um, that's him. So he sold to a pretty cool home. He has a setup ready to go. So sliders are the ones that are gonna do really well in cold weather, but I'm gonna go ahead and add a heat pack to him as well. I've got the letter to the person, and he's also going to go in a snake bag. If I can fit small turtles in delis, I will, but they also do just fine in these bags. I try and tie it as closely to the actual animal as possible um, to make sure he doesn't like get caught in the material or anything. So he'll be good like this, and he'll be nice and snug in this 12 inch box. I'm gonna go ahead and put tissue paper on the bottom. Now, although there's over 20 animals that have sold, we can only ship a few because the weather does not permit all of them being shipped. Uh, for example, in some states, it's 9 to 10 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, so some people are going to be waiting a while, which is why I'm including letters with these. It's kind of an apology, and uh, each person got a coupon. This turtle is going to New Jersey. Next up, we've got a Colombian rainbow boa who is pretty nippy and I'm not looking forward to getting in this box. I'll go ahead and open this pack. He's in this bag so I could bring him upstairs. Uh, so he's holding onto a cord that was in this bag. Still a really cool boa, lots of nice iridescence. I'm not sure if you can see it. Uh, we were given a handful of rainbow boas. I actually filmed a vlog where we picked all these up. I don't wanna give this person my Cord. And here he is. This is one of the young ones. I don't remember the exact morph. He's het for something pretty cool and he's not happy. So let's get him in the bag. I don't know how to get him in the bag. Let's do this. Sir, please calm down. I'll wait for him to kind of relax at the bottom and then I'll tie it. And there we go. The, I bought these transparent bags. They were a little more expensive, but I think it's way nicer being able to see your animal before you actually open it up. Uh, so you know where their head is and you know if they're upset. Uh, this is a smallest box we have. It's a six by six. And the nice thing is it keeps the small snakes very snug and it's more affordable to ship smaller boxes. So once he actually calms down, he's gonna coil up in the middle of this. And there we go. I'll put the letter here. This one's going to Virginia Beach. This little yellow-bellied slider is one that we actually can't even legally profit off of because he's under four inches. So that's kind of a pain, but we definitely still want to help them out nevertheless. He's so small that he has a lot of extra space in this cup here. So I might add some paper towel or something to it so that he doesn't get bumped around. He's likely going to rip this tissue paper up while he's in here, but uh, that's okay. So now even if it got bumped up or down, he won't actually shake around or bump his head or anything. So I'm gonna just shove him all the way to the bottom. What I like is these cups fit really snug in these boxes, so they won't shake around as much. Here's all the boxes I filled with animals so far. We've got three, six, seven, eight. And uh, I gotta go one more from downstairs and then we have one more up here. Right here is our shelf of bearded dragons. Hello. You can see basically they just have all the necessities they need. Uh, a lot of them are dirty because we haven't cleaned them today yet. Uh, they get cleaned about three times a week uh, where we wipe everything down, change the water, and make sure all their bulbs are working. For example, that bulb got knocked over, so I'll mix that. Uh, each one has a heating, UVB, and then water bowl, a basking spot, and a little bit more, because why not? And this is enough space for them for the time being. Each one is here at most for a couple months, but usually they're gone in less than a month. So it's a nice little simple, affordable, temporary setup. Some of them have dividers, like this one, because uh, not all the dragons get along as well as others, so. We make sure the ones that get angry or defensive or aggressive uh, can't see each other. One being shipped today is Lucius, who we've had for a long time here, and he finally gets to go, so that's exciting.
Well, I didn't get to talk about all the animals uh, because I'm kind of in a rush because we just have so much to do today. So I figured I would do it on the way to FedEx, which is like a 20 or 30 minute drive. So we've got time to chat. Um, so there's 10 animals, which is the most we've shipped in a day. And uh, the animals are here for quite a while because of weather. So there's still 11 more to ship, but uh, we got Lucius the Bearded Dragon, uh, and then Lucky the Bearded Dragon, who you also saw in a video, he had metabolic bone disease and some other issues like a snip tail and stuff. Um, so he's going to be on his way, which is exciting. He will probably be the most sad to see go, because um, uh, we really liked him, but it's good that he'll have more attention from a permanent home with someone else. Then there were a couple leopard geckos, including the gecko with metabolic bone disease as well, which you probably saw in that same thing. Basically, I, I shipped all the animals from that metabolic bone disease video, uh, including the leopard gecko, the slider, and Lucky the Breeder Dragon. So that's cool to have them all go off on the same day. So I was going to get them x-rayed um, from this time, but the vet that I wanted to get them x-rayed at ended up never responding to me, so that was kind of annoying. I want to do one of the vets that I actually trust, and one of the very few that I still kind of like is um, just never responded. So it, there's a chance they missed the inquiry, but they've never missed past inquiries from me. Um, so unfortunately we won't get those x-rayed, but maybe we'll be able to get some future ones x-rayed with other issues. But overall this is an exciting day to have these animals off. It is January something, one of the first days of the year, and um, that'll open up space for the animals coming in tomorrow. I think we're only getting three tomorrow, but uh, there's going to be more the rest of this month. Like I said at the start, over a hundred, which puts us at max capacity. At this house I'm comfortable having about two to 250, two, about 200 to 250 animals, and we are at that. So. Yeah, we're gonna have a waiting list. Um, also, a lot of you probably thought we never even ship animals out because I've done those two unboxing videos, but we never actually uh, <laughs> sent animals out. Um, but believe it or not, we do. And the site is basically completely empty as of filming this. But once all this is organized, once I'm back, and once I can clean a little bit, all I'm gonna be doing is listing new animals because we have at least 20 or 30 that are ready to go up. And I'm sure there'll be more than that within a week or so. We do still want to breed some and we already have bred a couple of things which will be um, on the site shortly. But until then, we'll have lots of rescued and rehomed animals. Well, it's a couple days later and those 10 animals are off. I thought I'd shoot the end of this video downstairs because I've never actually shown stuff like the Breed of Dragon Rack, which you saw earlier. Uh, I'm shooting this at 4 or 5 a.m. So all the lights are off except for the overhead light I just turned on. But uh, I'm sure a lot of you do wonder how we are able to maintain and keep over 100 animals. So here's a little sneak peek to uh, part of the house. As you can see, we have started using some shelving and some tubs for temporary animals that are only here for at most a couple months. Uh, these are some of the permanent animals like Rosie and Shadow and Gobi. And th there's quite a few things. So there's a lot for me to show you, but I guess that'll be for another time because this is already about 20 minutes long. I also want to show off this one more time before I leave you. Uh, I, I redid the packaging room. I threw away all the damaged boxes and this shelf is just clean boxes. We've got the big boxes, pretty big, kind, kind of big, and then small boxes, and then all the stuff like snake bags. It's just a lot more organized now, so it's way easier to pull boxes, put them on the shelf or on the table, and package them. So why not finish this video in the closet where it kind of began? Hopefully you enjoyed seeing how some of the things in Emerald Scales works, like shipping animals off, and a preview of the first floor, which I haven't really shown, but I'm looking forward to showing you a lot more of how everything works down there and how we can process dozens and dozens of animals every month. And I'm looking forward to showing you the details of those in the future. But until then, I hope you enjoyed. I'm Alex, and thanks for watching. We're unboxing. He's a little jumpy right now. I know he doesn't touch me. He's been in delivery. We're unboxing a Euro Mastix. I'm gonna put him in his box, in his cage soon. Nice colors. Wait till you see his colors. It's a nice bright orange, red. Pretty cool.